So this video is Integrated 3, Chapter 3, D-Day number 2. So on this first problem, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to solve the system, and we want to try to eliminate either our X's or our Y's. So X's, I'd have to try to get a 12 in front of it, one being positive, one being negative. Um, here, I'd have to get a 6 one being positive, one being negative. I think I'm going to try to get the six. So I am going to multiply the first equation by a three and the second equation by a two. So when I multiply this first equation by a three, I'm going to get nine X minus six Y equals 39. Second equation, eight X plus six Y is equal to 12 and that was my goal was to get the same number okay the same coefficient in front of my y's but one positive one negative and so i'm going to use what we call the elimination method i'm going to add these up i get 17x is equal to and here i end up getting a 51 and when i divide by 17 i get a 3. now it's a system i need to find my x and my y so I can put that x equal 3 into either equations. Let's say I put it into the purple one. So I go 3x um, minus 2y equal 13. So in place of the x, I'm going to go 3 times 3 minus 2y is equal to 13. 9 minus 2y is equal to 13. So I am going to get a negative 2y is equal to going to minus the 9 and I'm going to get a 4. So I end up getting y is equal to negative 2. And so I'm going to have 3 comma negative 2 as my point of intersection. Okay, on B, this time I'm going to use what we call equal values because both of these are equal to y. And so I am going to take 4 minus 8x underneath the square root is equal to 2x minus 1. Now, I need to check my answers here because the square root means I want the principal root, the positive root. So I want to check to see if um, positive or zero. I'm fine with it being positive or zero. Can't be negative. Can't be negative. So um, I am going to rewrite this. Okay. Square root of four minus eight X is equal to two X minus one. I'm going to square both sides. So when I square this side, I get a four minus eight X and when I square this side, I got to square the whole quantity. That is going to be a perfect square trinomial. So that's going to be a 4x squared. Okay, square the first term, multiply and double. So that's going to be a negative 2x doublet, negative 4x. Square my negative 1 plus 1. If you aren't sure how I got that, then take 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1, um, either FOIL or using the box, box method and multiply it out. So now I have a quadratic. So I am going to minus four from both sides. I'm going to add eight X to both sides because I want to get a zero. So I get zero is equal to four X squared plus four X minus three. And I'm going to try to factor this. So I'm gonna get a box to diamond. Um, I am going to be putting in my 4x squared and negative 3. That multiplies to a negative 12x squared and has to add to that 4x. And that is going to be a positive 6x and a negative 2x. So a 6x and a negative 2x. And now when I'm trying to find the outside, um, a 4 could be a four and a one or a two and a two. Seeing the six there, um, it can't be the four and the one. So it's going to have to be a two and a two. 
um, 2x times 3, 2x times a negative 1. So my factors are going to be um, 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 1. And when I set those equal to 0, this is going to be a negative 3 halves. This is going to be a positive 1 half. So those are going to be um, two possible solutions, okay? Um, I need to substitute in to find my y, but before I even do so, remember, I need to take this and I need to see if it makes that positive or negative. So when I put in a negative three halves into that, okay, when I take it and put it in here, that's actually gonna give me a negative. So this one's not gonna be an answer. When I put in a one half, I am going to get one half, well, two times a one half, which is one minus one. So one minus one is zero. I can get a zero, that's acceptable, okay? And that's also what I would get if I put it into this, for my y. So one point of intersection, the only point of intersection is going to be one half comma zero. That is the only point of intersection. Again, the x being a negative three halves would have made that um, not be a principal root. Okay. On this next one, we're solving by graphing. Okay. So both of these are lines. Uh, I'll do this one in red and I'll do this one in purple. So the red one, I'm gonna be starting with a y-intercept of three, going up one over three, and I wanna be accurate, so down one over three. And let me get my line tool to help me be a little more accurate. Okay. And I'm just gonna extend this out. Whoops, not extend the point, sorry. Extend this out. Okay, so this is that first line. Um, the second line, uh, my y-intercept is going to be zero. I'm going to be going down to right three. And I'm also going to be going up to right three, which means that point right there is where they're going to meet. So let me just kind of circle that in a different color. Okay, so this point right here, they both met at. Um, let me just draw the graph. So uh, the answer is not just drawing the graph. The answer is the actual point of intersection. And this point of intersection right here is negative three comma two. And that is the solution to the system. Now on B, this one is a system of inequalities. That means we have to do shading. So um, let's say I do... I'm going to do blue and yellow, okay? I'm going to graph this one in black, but I'm going to shade it in yellow, okay? So that is going to be an absolute value graph. Um, my vertex for this is going to be 2 comma negative 5. So I'm going to go to 2 comma negative 5. That's going to be my vertex. It opens up. This 3 is my stretch, but since this is linear in nature, I'm going to, it's like my slope, so I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, over one, one, two, three, over one, one, two, three, over one, and same the other direction, up three over one, up three over one, up three over one, and this is gonna be a solid line. So let me get my line tool, it's gonna be a solid line. And for this one, I would be shading, since it's greater than or equal to, I'd be shading above. So if I get my yellow, I'm gonna be shading everything above. Everything above, okay? Which it means in this case, it's gonna be inside. Um, my second graph, let me do that one in blue. Um, this one is going to be a parabola. Its vertex is going to be 1, 4. So I'm going to go to 1, 4. It's going to be 
have a negative two as a slope, it means it's going to open down. And because of that two, that is not like what I did for my parabola, my absolute value. I don't go down two over one, down two over one. That would make it a V. This is a square. Okay, it's a parabola. So I'm going to go out one. One squared is one. Times it by negative two. I'm going to go down two. I'm going to go out two. Two squared is four. I'm going to go down one, two, three, four. I'm sorry. And then I have to double that four. I apologize. So that's going to be um, eight. So okay, let me do it so you can see it with my cursor. So again, I went out one. One squared is one times that by negative two. I went down two. Same over here. I go out two. Two squared is four. I double four. I'm going to go down eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to have a point there. And I'm going to also go on the other side. So let me draw those points. Um, this is going to be a dashed parabola. So I'm going to come here and change it to a dashed um, line that I'm drawing. And let me just start again. Okay, so I'm going to do dashed. And that means nothing on that parabola actually makes it true. And then it is less than, so less than means I'm going to shade below. And in this case, when I shade below, that's actually going to be here. And so the area that it's going to be is the area that is actually the blue and the yellow, which is right here, it'd be this green, okay? Blue and yellow make green. That's where my answer would be. Now, you only have to shade there. You do not have to shade the other two sections that you saw. That is my answer. Any point in there, and you need to shade because that is the solution. Okay, on these ones, we're solving. So this is a um, quadratic, basically. What I'm going to do is my goal is just to get um, first this isolated. So I am going to add 13 to both sides. So I'm going to have two times the quantity X plus three squared is equal to, and when I add 13, I get an 18. Um, then I'm going to divide by two. So X plus three squared is going to equal nine. Now I'm going to undo the square by square rooting. So I am going to take the square root of this side, and I'm going to take the square root of this side. And when I square root a square, it gives me just the x plus 3 back. And when I take the square root of 9, I get a positive and a negative 3. Then I'm going to minus 3 from both sides. So I'm going to have x is equal to negative 3. And then I have my plus and minus 3. So I'm going to be getting two answers. One answer is going to be negative 3 plus 3, which is 0. That's one answer. The second answer is negative three minus three, which is negative six. Those are my two solutions. Now on B, this is an inequality. So I should be getting an answer on a number line. Um, I want zero on the other side. So I'm going to minus four. And so I'm going to have X squared plus three X. And when I minus four, I get a negative 10. I'm going to factor that. So what multiplies to a negative 10 and adds to three is an X plus five and an X minus three. This is gonna have a boundary point of negative five and three. So I'm gonna go to my number line. I'm gonna have a negative five and a three. And if I look back at this, I see that this is um, greater than or equal to. So that means it's going to be solid. I'm going to have solid dots. Let me do it in a different color. Okay. Solid dot here, solid dot here, because that's where it equals. I like to think about this is I'm really thinking of this as a parabola and I want where it is since it's greater than or equal to zero. I basically want above zero or above the X axis, which I'm thinking of as the number line. So if I get, um, draw a parabola, so I try to do it in yellow. Let me make it a little thicker so we can see it. Um, this is a positive parabola. So that means I would be going up. I'd be opening up and I want where I'm above. 
Okay. So if, if I get my cursor here and I'm following, so you see right here at, at negative five, I'm actually at zero at three. I'm at zero outside of negative five over here. You see, where am I? I'm above I'm greater. Okay. I'm greater. Um, in between negative five and three, you see I'm below I'm less than, um, after, outside of three, I'm greater I'm above. So I want greater. So my answer is going to be shading this way. Whoops, I wanted to change the color. Um, this way and this way. Now that parabola is, again, not really part of my answer. I just use it to help my myself get that answer because I know as I'm following this parabola, I want where it's going to be greater than or equal to zero. So it's at zero here at negative five and at three. But here I am above, I'm greater. That's why I'm shading here. In between negative five and three, you see I'm below the line. And then once I get to three, I'm at the line, which is zero. And then I'm above greater. Um, so I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to write my answer. And my answer is going to be, since I have two pieces, this piece is X is less than or equal to negative five, or because I have two pieces, the other piece is X is greater than or equal to three. And that's my solution. Okay, on the next one, this is an absolute value equation. So for this, first thing I need to do is I need to get this absolute value isolated. That's gonna be my first step. So I am going to be adding one to both sides. And so I get a 36 on the other side. I'm gonna be dividing by four, dividing by four, dividing by four. So I have the absolute value of X minus six is equal to 3x plus 9. Now, for an absolute value, I can only have an absolute value equal to a positive or zero. This can't be negative. Right now, I don't know what it is because it depends on what the x is. So once I get my answers, I'm going to check right there. So I am going to write two equations. One equation is going to be x minus 6 is equal to the 3x plus 9. The other one's going to be x minus 6 is equal to the opposite, which is a negative 3x minus 9. And I'm going to solve these. So I am going to add x to both sides, and I get 2x over here. I'm going to minus 9 from both sides, so I get a negative 15. I'm going to divide by 2, so I get a negative 15 halves, or negative 7.5. Um, the other one, I'm going to add 3x to both sides, so I'm going to get a 4x. I'm going to add 6 to both sides, so I get a negative 3. I'm going to divide by 4, so I get a negative 3 fourths. Now, both of these, I need to check and see, do they make this positive or 0, which is acceptable, or do they make it a negative? So if I take three times a negative 15 halves plus nine, um, I have three times, just putting in my calculator, um, three times a negative 15 halves or 7.5 plus nine, I get a negative 13.5 as a decimal. So that means that this one is not going to be an answer. So let me try the other one. So three times a negative three fourths plus nine. So three times a negative 0.75 plus nine, I get a positive 6.75. So this one here, even though it is a negative answer, it does not make the other side of my absolute value negative. So it's an answer. X is equal to negative three fourths. Okay, on D, this is one where we need to get the basis to be the same. And the base is gonna be two. So this is gonna be two to the X plus one. And just a little note, two to the six is equal to 64. So this is gonna be a, let me rewrite it better a two 
to the sixth. When the bases are the same, we can take the exponents and set them equal to each other. So I'm going to have x plus 1 is equal to 6, which means x is 5. And that's our answer. Okay, on this one here, um, I have a square root. It's isolated. It's equal to a 3x. Again, this can't be negative. I also cannot get a negative underneath the square root, so I'll check that also. Um, so let me just rewrite this. Square root of 8 minus x is equal to 3x. I am going to square both sides. Um, and when I do, I get an 8 minus x. And when I square a 3x, I get a 9x squared. So you want to be careful with that. I'm going to bring everything over with the 9x squared. So that means I am going to add the x and minus the 8. And now I'm going to factor this. So I'm going to do a box to diamond. I have 9x squared, negative 8, which is a negative 72x squared, and it has to add to x. So that is going to be a 9x and a negative 8x. 9x and negative 8x. Now, a 9 is a 3 and a 3, but that's not going to work. It's also a 9 and a 1. So I'm going to have a 9x here and an x here. 9x times 1, x times a negative 8. So my factors are going to be a 9x minus 8, and an x plus 1 is equal to 0. So I get x is equal to 8 ninths, and x is equal to negative 1. But remember, I need to make sure that up here, this 3x does not become negative. Now, when I put in a negative 1, that is going to make it negative. So that one is not going to be an answer. When I put in the 8 ninths, that's not going to make it negative. So that is my answer. On number 4, these ones are inequalities, so we need to put them on a number line. So for this, I want to make sure that I get everything on one side, zero on the other side. So it's going to be a 2x squared. I'm going to add x. Minus 28 is greater than or equal to zero. Um, I am going to do a box to diamond. So I have a 2x squared and a negative 28, which is going to be a negative 56x squared. And I need it to be an x which is going to be an 8x and a negative 7x. So 8x negative 7x. So when I'm doing that, um, I am going to have a 2x here, x here, plus 4 minus 1. Sorry, minus 7. Okay, so this is going to be a 2x minus 7 and an x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. So my boundary points are a 7 halves and a negative 4. So negative 4, 7 halves, it's greater than or equal to, which means I am going to include both of these. So I'm going to have a point at both of these. Um, I'm going to think of it as a parabola. It is a positive parabola. So, and I want where it's greater or than or equal to. So if I'm drawing a parabola, let me do it in a color we can see better maybe. Um, I am starting above the x-axis. So I'm greater, greater, greater. This is where I'm going to be. Now I'm at zero. I'm less than because I'm below at zero. Now again, I'm greater than because I'm above. We want greater. So greater is going to be um, let me get shade here going this direction and this direction. And again, I don't need the parabola. That was just to help me figure out where it is greater or less than without having to compute. Um, so this answer, this piece right here is X is less than or equal to negative four or because there's two pieces x is greater than or equal to negative 7 halves. You need to write your answer as inequality. You need to give a graph. B. 
again, this is an apps. I mean, this is a um, inequality. This is an absolute value one. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do for an absolute value one is I'm actually going to rewrite it as an equation, get my two boundary points because we're going to have two equations here and it's, it's, we're going to figure out where to shade after we get our boundary points. Okay. So one equation is going to be two X minus one equals 15. And again, this is a positive 15. So we're good to go here. Um, 2x minus 1 equals a negative 15. So this is 2x is equal to 16. x is equal to 8. 2x is equal to, when I add 1, I get a negative 14. x is equal to negative 7. So I'm going to have a negative 7 and a positive 8. And when I look here, this is strictly less than. So that means I'm going to have open circles. Open circle here, open circle here. Now, I'm thinking of this number line as being at the height of 15. Why at the height of 15? Because we want it to be less than 15. These values gave me where it was equal to 15, and I want it less than 15. And this is an absolute value. So if I think about an absolute value, an absolute value is a V. So when I'm to the left of negative 7, my, my absolute value would have been higher than 15. Now I'm at 15. Now I'm less than 15 in between my seven and my eight. And then I'm greater than 15 after. Again, I want less than. So I am going to be shading less than is going to be in between. And outside of my negative seven and eight, I was above the line. So that would have been greater. Okay. Again, I'm just using this as a way to quickly get my answer without computing. Now, when I have it, when it's shaded in between, as opposed to the one next to it, which was two separate pieces, this is an and. And the way we write an and is we start with the smaller number, negative seven, it's gonna be both less thans, x less than eight, and that's your answer. So it basically means my values are in between negative seven and eight, not including negative seven, not including eight. Okay, on five. So we're trying to rewrite by um, completing the square. So what we're trying to get is something like this. There's no A in front of this, so I'm not gonna write my A. Something like an X minus H squared plus K. That's what we're trying to get here. That's the graphing form we're looking for. And we're gonna complete the square. So um, what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna minus the five from both sides because I don't know if that's really helping me make it a perfect square. I know it's not. Now, the way I'm going to do this, you can do a box, but we're not, you wouldn't do it as a factoring. You would do it where you're trying to figure out, okay, how am I taking this negative 4x and splitting it evenly? That would be a negative 2x and a negative 2x. Okay, that's how you would start that. And then you'd find the outside. And then you go, okay, wait, what's this blank box here? Well, a negative two times a negative two is a four. And that's what I would add to both sides. That's one way to do it, okay? Um, I'm just gonna move this for a sec. Um, another way to do it is to um, use this little formula where you basically are going to take your B you're gonna divide it by two and square it. So my B is negative four. So I am gonna take negative four, divide it by two, which is negative two and square it. So negative two squared is four. So you see, I got the same four in both cases. That's what I'm adding here. That's what I'm adding here. And so this is a Y minus one is equal to now the x minus x squared minus 4x plus 4 is something squared. And you can see here it's an x minus 2, x minus 2, which means it's an x minus 2 squared. How do you do it if you don't draw that box? Look at half of negative 4. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. Same idea, same idea. Then the last step is to add the 1. And there you go. 
there's your parabola in the graphing form. Now the next one, okay, um, let me just kind of move this. Oh, it's going to move everything. Um, the next one is going to be a slightly different type of graph. What you want to notice here is I have an x squared and I have a y squared. That means it's going to be a circle. There's other graphs that have x squared and y squared, but the only one we have seen is a circle. And a circle is of the form x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals a number. I'm going to write r squared because it, it's your radius squared, but it's a number. Okay. So I'm going to go parenthesis x squared minus 8x. Give myself a gap plus parenthesis y squared plus 6y. So I'm getting my x's together, my y's together equals negative 21. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to add something here. And if I do it to one side, I've got to do it to the other side. And I'm going to add something here. And I got to do that over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it down here. I'm going to take my B, which is negative 8, divide it by 2, which is negative 4. And then I square that, which is 16. So this is going to be a 16. This is going to be a 16. Then I'm going to take the 6y, so the 6, divided by 2, which is 3, and I square that, which is a 9. So this is going to be a plus 9, and this is a plus 9. So this is going to clean up to x. And remember, I want to remember what was half of negative 8. That's a negative 4, so this is a minus 4 squared. And then here, what was half of 6? Half of 6 was 3, so this is going to be a y plus 3 squared. Um, 16 plus 9 is 25, minus the 21 is 4. That's our equation of our circle. Next one, they want us to write the inequalities for this. So um, we have two lines here. Um, both of them are dashed. So um, for this one here, I'm just going to call this one number 1. This one here, I'm going to call number two. So for number one, my y-intercept is a five. And it looks like I'm going down two, over two, down two, over two. Or I can clean it up, down one, over one. So since my y-intercept is six, this is going to be y. Um, I'll leave the equal off for a second. And um, my slope is down one over one. So that's going to be a negative X plus six. Now, if I'm looking at the shading, what happens here is you'll notice that the shading is on this side of the line. So that means I shaded greater than that line. So this is going to be a greater than, not a greater than or equal to because it's dashed. Okay. For my blue line, my y-intercept is a negative 5. And this looks like I'm going up 1 over 1. So this is going to be y and then um, plain old x minus 5. Now for this one, my shading is, a, is on this side of the line because you can see it's there. And that is actually also greater. So this is going to be greater. And that's your system of inequalities. You need to pay attention to the, you have to give me the actual equation of the lines, proper ones. And you have to give me the proper greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. Okay, seven. Um, write and solve a system of equations. So this is kind of integrated one where we used to write our systems. So um, six burritos, okay, um, let's see, am I still on dashed? No. So six burritos, five tacos, cost $37. So I'm going to have B equal um, cost, cost of burrito. And T equal cost of taco. So if I'm going to translate that, that's going to be six 
B plus 5T is equal to 37. Now the second one says three burritos and four tacos cost 2150. So that's going to be 3B plus 4T is equal to 2150. So I want to now solve the system. I noticed that my Bs um, would probably be the easiest one to eliminate. I'm going to multiply this equation by a negative 2 so that I get a negative 6 in front of it. So this is going to stay 6B plus 5T equals 37. The other one, when I multiply by a negative um, 2, is going to be a negative 6B minus 8T is equal to a negative 43. Um, when I add those two equations together, I'm going to eliminate my Bs. I get a negative 3T is equal to a negative 6. I divide by negative 3 and I get T is 2. So it costs $2 for a taco. $2 for taco. And I still need to find the burrito. So um, I can put it into either equation. I think I'm going to put it into the one that doesn't have the decimal money. So I'm going to put it into the 6B. So I'm going to go 6B plus 5 times $2 for a taco is equal to 37. So 6B, um, this is plus 10 equals 37. So 6B is equal to 27. And so when I divide um, 27 by 6, 27 divided by 6 is $4.50. So four fifty for burrito. Um, on number eight, decide if the function is even, odd, or neither. So remember, what you do is into your function, if you put in a negative x and you get out the same thing as you started, that's even. If you put in a negative x and you get the opposite of what you started, that's odd. If it's not either one of those, then the answer is neither. So I'm going to go 7 times a negative x to the 6th power over a negative x squared minus 3 times a negative x to the 10th. Okay, and you got to be careful. Don't go in negative times a negative here because this is a negative to a power. We've got to do that math first. So a negative to an even power is always going to be positive. So in both cases, all cases here, let me get my, this negative to an even power is going to be a positive. This negative X squared is going to be a positive and I have a minus three, but this negative X to the 10th is going to be a positive. So you see, I ended up with this, which is exactly the same as this. Okay, these are the same. And since they're the same, it's even. You have to show your work and you don't just leave it like this right here. You have to tell me what this, does that mean, okay? Um, on number nine, calculate the X and Y intercepts. So to find an uh, X intercept, you put zero in for your Y. So this is going to be zero. So I am going to do zero is equal to three X squared minus 13 X minus 30 over two X minus five. Now you can really think of this zero over one and you can think about, okay, cross multiply this. This is zero cross multiply this. I get three X squared minus 13 X minus 30. So really, when we have like a fraction like this, the denominator, we're not trying to make it zero. We're always trying to make the numerator zero, okay? Um, so now I'm going to factor this. So I'm going to do a box to diamond. 
So I have a 3x squared and a negative 30. Um, that is going to be a negative 90x squared and add to a negative 13x. So let's see. Um, I'm thinking, so 1 and 90, 2 and 45, no, 3 and 30, no, 4 and Well, four and that's not going to go in evenly. Five and 18. That's going to be the one I want. Okay. So I'm going to want a negative 18x and a 5x. So a negative 18x and a 5x. So when I'm finding the outside, this is going to be 3x here, x here, um, plus five on this side, minus six on this side. So I have a 3x plus 5 and an x minus 6 equals 0. Um, this is going to be a negative 5 thirds. This is going to be a 6. So I have two x-intercepts. One's negative 5 thirds comma 0. The other one is 6 comma 0. Now to find the y, I'm going to put 0 in for my x's. So um, let me go three times zero squared minus 13 times zero minus 30 over two times zero minus five. So basically what's going to happen is all of the terms that had X's in it are going to cancel out and I, or become zeros, I should say. So I'm always going to be left with the ones that were just constants. So this is going to end up being a negative 30 over a negative 5 or 6. So my y-intercept is 0, comma 6. Um, on 10, we're graphing this. Okay, graphing this. This is a cubic graph. It has an inflection point or a locator point at 2, comma, negative 4. So I'm going to go to 2, comma, negative 4. I'm kind of almost off the graph here. Um, and then if I'm trying to graph this, it is a cube. So um, if I go over one, one cubed is one. So I'm going to go up one. Let me get a little fatter. Okay. So if I go over one, one cubed is one. Okay. And if I go negative one, negative one cubed is negative one. Um, if I go from, let me just kind of maybe do this inflection point in a different color just as a reference right now. Okay, so this is the inflection point. So if I go out um, two, two cubed is eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and I would go the same the other direction. Um, this is gonna be solid. So I'm gonna draw a solid curve. And I'm going to continue down here into this picture. And this is greater than or equal to, so I want to shade above. So for that, to shade above, if I come to where my inflection point is and I go up, this is above, this side's above, okay? This side's above. Um, this side, if I went down, is below, okay? So this is greater, this is less than. I want here. So I'm going to shade everything on this side, but it's really above. And that's my answer. You have to shade on inequalities. Okay. On 11, what is the equation of this graph? Let me kind of zoom in here. Okay. So um, this is a circle. And this is the center of the circle. And that center is at negative two comma two. And my radius, let's see, we went out one, two, three. So this is going to be X plus two squared plus Y minus two squared, because it's always opposite in the parentheses, is equal to three squared. So it's really x plus 2 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 9. We write it out as a 9. 
on 12, what is the equation of the graph below? Okay, so this graph is an absolute value graph. Its vertex is at 1 comma 0. And I'm going up 1 over 1. So it's just a basic absolute value. So this is going to be y is equal to absolute value of x minus 1. And that's it. That's your answer. Um, on the next one, graph and label all locator points and asymptotes. So this is, has a locator point at 5, 1. This is, again, a, a cube. So I'm going to go to 5, 1. And for this, um, let me just highlight this. Okay, that's my locator point. Okay, so from here, um, it is a negative in front. So when I'm doing that, let me just get a little thicker point here. I would go out 1. 1 cubes 1, I times it by a negative. So I'm going down this direction. This direction, I go negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1, but then I'm times it by a negative, which actually makes it a positive. So I am going to get this. And let me just emphasize, this was a point. This was a point. That was a point. Um, this next one has a... Um, starting point at negative six comma negative three. So I'm going to go to negative six, negative three, which is going to be off my graph. Okay. Um, here, I'm going to do it in red. So negative six, negative one, two, three, I'd be kind of starting down here. Um, this has a negative on it. So that means when I go over one, and let me just get it a little fatter for a sec. When I go over one, the square root of one is one times it by a negative. So I'm going to go down one. When I go out one, two, three, four, the square root of four is two times that by a negative. Um, and then I go five, six, seven, eight, nine. The square root of nine is three times that by a negative. So I go down one, two, three, for example. And this would be my graph. I'm just going to make this um, other one not collide with it. How about that? Okay. Um, on C, this is an absolute value graph. I mean, sorry, an uh, um, exponential graph. And this exponential graph has an asymptote at y equal negative 2. Uh, I'm going to draw it as a dashed line. So y equal negative 2. Okay, that is my asymptote. And then what's going to happen is you can kind of think of this as 7, negative 2, kind of as a locator point. Again, this one's not going to fit on here. They didn't really plan this well. Um, okay, so I would go to 7, negative 2. So 7, negative 2. And then let's just say that 6, 7. Okay, so 7, negative 2. Um, this is where I'm going to start my graph. So this is going to be here. And um, if you want, you can add on a new graph if you want to and put it over this because this one really should be shifted over because um, we're at a positive seven. Um, so this is where I would be doing like three comma three to the power zero is one. The next one would be three to the power one is three, for example. And I'm going to have my absolute value graph over here, kind of running out of space. And that's the end of this video. Hopefully this is helpful, but again, you need to make sure you know how to do these without my help.